Between the aisles of new keto products that you find in stores to the advice and information that you find online and on social media, it can be hard to decipher what you really need to be successful on the keto diet. But today we're not gonna talk about what you need, we're gonna talk about what you don't need. So there's a bunch of products and foods and advice that's just not necessary for getting into ketosis or for following a keto lifestyle that's gonna fit your goals. So today we're gonna go over the 10 things that you do not need on a keto diet. We have great alternatives and recipes for our sugar-laden comfort foods like cakes, candies, and ice cream. And these products and recipes can be extremely useful when you're first starting out because you're starting to crave those things, so why not have a sugar-free option? It's always better to have a low-carb version than to overindulge on something that's filled with sugar. But just because it's low-carb or keto doesn't mean that it's fair game for going crazy and having an entire package of keto chocolate or enjoying dessert every night of the week. Keto dessert should be treated just like a dessert would on any type of diet, which means that you have to consume it in moderation because keto desserts are still high in calories and a lot of fat, which is okay to indulge in that every once in a while to go over your daily caloric limit, but if you're excessively doing it, you're gonna start to gain weight or inflammation, especially if you're not active. On top of that, many companies will put ingredients in their syrups, bars, and chocolates that actually affect your insulin. It actually increases it. So products will have things like maltodextrin or sucralose. There's even some soluble corn fibers that can affect insulin. And there's also concern that some of these sugar alternatives are affecting our microbiome, which might hinder your weight loss or be a reason why you're always inflamed. So if you're experiencing a weight loss stall, inflammation, or any unpleasant GI effects, it might be time to lay off those keto treats. But if you do find that having like a daily dose of keto chocolate can fit into your lifestyle and it doesn't hinder your goals, then have at it. Bulletproof coffee. This was first popularized around 10 years ago. People started putting butter and MCT oils to their coffee. It makes it super frothy like a latte, but also has a bunch of health benefits like increased energy, better cognition, better focus, and it also kept you full for hours. The MCT oil provides immediate energy for your brain to use, and the butter actually helps sustain you for a very long time. Don't get me wrong, I still love Bulletproof Coffee, and I actually have it from time to time, but it's really helpful if you know how to use it the right way. First thing in the morning, and generally you just wanna have one cup. The mistake that a lot of people will make is that they will have multiple cups of this butter coffee throughout the day, and they'll sometimes even have breakfast on top of that. Well, each cup of Bulletproof coffee is around like 300 to 500 calories, and it's a lot of fat. So yeah, it might keep you full, but if you're also combining other things on top of that, bacon, eggs, maybe some berries, avocado, that's really pushing you over your calorie limit. And you don't need a special cup of coffee to give you focus and energy. The keto diet's actually gonna do that anyway if you're doing it correctly. And if you're looking for a delicious way to enjoy coffee without all the extras, try these coffee capsules by Cometeer, who is my sponsor for today's video. With this coffee, you can quickly make the perfect cup of hot or iced coffee. There's no bitter flavor, there's no sediment, it's just smooth and balanced coffee. And these aren't your typical capsules. In fact, you don't even need a machine to brew these. The coffee is already brewed and flash frozen to ensure freshness and peak flavor. They arrive frozen and ship to your door monthly with a customizable option like decaf, light or dark roast, plus they have new roasts every month. Just loosen the frozen capsule under some hot water for a bit, and then we're gonna drop the frozen puck in a mug. Then add six to eight ounces of hot water to melt and stir. It smells so good. I've been enjoying this coffee for a couple months now, and I find that I don't even need creamer or butter because this is a fantastic brew on its own. For a limited time, you can get 25% off your first two orders when you use my code KETO25 at cometeer.com slash KETO25. If you've been wanting to try Cometeer, now is the time. Speaking of butter, there was a trend going around a few years ago where you slathered butter on everything. People were putting on everything just to up their fat macro to 70 to 75%. It's not really necessary. You don't need to put butter on everything you eat. By choosing the right cuts of fatty meat and using healthy oils like olive oil and avocado oil in your cooking, you're actually gonna get plenty of fat. On top of that, you don't always want to try and meet your fat macro because one, you might already be 
be full and you never want to eat beyond if you're full. And two, you actually want to start burning the fat that you have on your body rather than relying on all of the fuel that you're bringing in to your body in the form of food. Cause your body's going to burn that first before it burns your body fat. So lay off the butter because it's not necessary. And since we're talking about macro tracking, it can be helpful to track where you are in terms of carbs, protein, and fat and calories, especially when you're first starting out on keto. This will help guide you to figure out what you should be eating and what you shouldn't be eating. Macro tracking is also really useful if you're experiencing a weight loss plateau because you might be eating more carbs and calories than you actually realized. But realistically, when you continue on your keto journey, you actually might stop tracking your protein and fat. Some people just will only track carbs and eventually some people drop counting that too because you get a feel for what you're eating and how many carbs or calories are in there, especially if you start to eat the same things every day. And this is especially true for those who have reached a maintenance phase of their journey. They're more after keto because of how it makes them feel. They feel good. So they don't necessarily always have to be so tight with their carbohydrates or fat or protein or calories. And there's still a lot of people who have success with keto that don't track a single thing. They just go by with how they feel or they're eating zero carb or very little carb. So there's no need to track. And I'll explain more on that later. Earlier, I talked about putting MCT oil in your coffee and MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. And there's been studies done to allude that MCT oil can actually help you feel full and decrease your need to eat. And the body breaks down these medium chains faster than it does a long chain fatty acid. So it's actually readily used. It's energy that's available and can be used right away, which is why a lot of people feel increased focus and cognition and energy when they take it. There's even evidence that it might be helpful for Alzheimer's disease. All that said, it's something that you don't have to take regularly to be in ketosis or to lead a keto lifestyle. It can be beneficial. And if you want to try it, by all means, you should, but it can upset your stomach and can cause digestive issues, especially if you start too much too soon. And if you find that it helps with you eating less and instant focus, by all means, take it. But again, not necessary. Exogenous ketones are ones that you consume orally. They're not the ones that are made in your body just from eating certain foods. They're ones that are actually made outside of your body and then you consume them. And they're marketed to get you increased energy and help get you in ketosis faster. Many of them claim that they're gonna boost the effects of the keto diet. And some of them actually say that they're gonna give you all the benefits of keto without having to limit your carbs, which is crazy. I'm instantly cautious of anything that has to be bought through a multi-level pyramid sort of deal. It just makes me see that these companies are more for profit and not for actually quality of their product and many of these ketone salts are expensive. There are people who feel noticeable differences when they drink ketone supplements, like an energy focus, decreased appetite, but then there's others that don't. I personally don't take them because I would rather get my ketones from the food that I eat because that's gonna give me more nutritional benefit rather than just some drink that just has ketones in it. And the bit about how you can drink ketones and still have a burger and fries and be in ketosis, that's just crap because really, yeah, you might register that you're having ketones in your blood because of the drink, but it doesn't mean that you're burning all those carbs. Like they have to go somewhere. Your body is going to store them in the form of fat. So what's the point? Speaking of testing your ketones, there's a lot of testing devices that you can do from home, from blood ketone monitors to the urine strips. There's even breathalyzers that you can do. These are great devices to use, especially when you're first starting out and you want to see if you're in ketosis or not, or you could use them throughout your journey just to see if maybe a certain food or something that you're doing or consuming is affecting you. That's a great way to track that. But really, as you continue on with your keto journey, there's not really a need to test all the time, or at least daily, only because you know when you're not in ketosis anymore. There's been times when I can feel it, I'll have decreased energy, I'm tired, I am cranky, I'm inflamed, and so I know that I must have eaten something or maybe had a little bit too many carbs and it kicked me out. And those urine strips, they're eventually not gonna change color the more keto adapted you get. And so you're gonna think that they're not working, but they actually, they actually are, they're just not measuring anything because when you become more fat adapted, you're utilizing those ketones more efficiently rather than excreting them out into your urine. 
Sure, dairy makes all of our recipes and foods more palatable on the keto diet, but it's not necessary to add gobs and gobs of cheese and heavy cream and cream cheese to our recipes. I mean, I know I'm kind of guilty of it sometimes. <laughs> But those are like comfort foods that are just kind of meant for like a one-off when you're really craving something. On a regular basis, I don't do gobs of cheese on my broccoli or have pizza all the time. And the reason why is that dairy is a source of inflammation for some, including myself. So I have to watch how much I consume. So if you find that if you're eating lots of dairy and it's stalling your weight loss, you feel inflamed, you feel bloated, you have digestive symptoms, it's a sign that it's probably time to lay off the dairy. Time-restricted eating or intermittent fasted, as it's also known as, is a great way to lose weight fast. And there's actually a lot of health benefits that come with it too, including autophagy and anti-aging benefits. And there are people who eat a keto lifestyle that aren't really hungry, so they find it easy to skip breakfast or even to skip lunch too, so they naturally intermittent fast. But that's not the case for everyone, and there's many people that still enjoy eating three meals a day. And some don't do it because they find that restricting their eating actually leads to binge eating later on. So it's not for everyone, and don't ever feel pressured into doing it, because I know a lot of people in the keto community do advise you to do intermittent fasting. Don't do it if it doesn't work for you. It's perfectly fine. And there's lots of people that still have success with keto, with weight loss, with health and everything that do not intermittent fast. Which leads me to my next thing that you absolutely do not need on a keto diet, which is other people's unsolicited advice, judgment, and the keto police. There's a lot of people out there that are gonna think they know better than you even experts, even myself, <laughs> but they don't. They aren't you, they don't know your body, they don't know what foods affect you and what foods don't. They aren't your doctor, they aren't your mom, they aren't your therapist, they don't know your struggles. If you're asking for advice, it's one thing, but little remarks like, you shouldn't eat tomatoes because they're not keto, or the microwave is actually gonna change your DNA if you use it, that's not helpful and nobody asks. So ultimately you have to decide what's right for you and what works for you, including some of these things that I mentioned today. So experiment. Remember, it's not a sprint to get into ketosis fast. This is a marathon journey of learning what makes you feel good and what doesn't. And if that means that you don't track your carbs and you eat zero carbs, like I show you how to do in this video here, then by all means, you do you.